the gentleman yields back. That concludes our questions. Uh, we'll now move to closing statement. If the ranking member wants to do one, the ranking member declines. I'll have a brief closing statement if that's all right. Uh, I want to thank the witnesses for, for being here today. The purpose of today's hearing was to examine the effectiveness of our current biosecurity and biosafety policies and discuss ways that we can improve them going forward. Uh, again, the uh, witness testimony today is very appreciated by this committee as we move forward. It's vital to properly investigate the gaps in oversight that currently exist for biosafety and biosecurity standards and draw attention to the lack of transparency surrounding lab incidents and safety inspections due to inadequate reporting requirements. Uh, through this investigation, we will determine what policies currently exist, whether those policies are sufficient, how those policies are applied internationally, and how to move forward. The COVID-19 pandemic uh, has uh, highlighted the need to better understand what safeguards are needed to protect ourselves and prevent a future pandemic. While the U.S as one of the strongest regulatory oversight mechanisms to enforce biosecurity, it only applies to research in this country or research funded by U.S. taxpayer money. As we heard today, if research is conducted outside the U.S., including in China, there's not only limited oversight, but an increased chance that lab leaks and accidents could occur. This current posture is not only wildly unsafe, but it significantly impairs our ability to respond to emerging threats. And as we discussed today, we must be able to effectively respond to and assess risk so that we can be prepared for a future pandemic, including the potential deliberate release of a biological weapon. As we learned during COVID-19, infectious diseases don't recognize borders, and once there's a containment issue, it may only be a matter of time before it gets to the United States. We know that there were sufficient concerns regarding biosecurity and biosafety at the Wuhan Institute of virology, but nothing was done. And we know that the American taxpayer was likely paying for some of this dangerous research. We cannot afford to have another COVID-19 pandemic. We cannot allow dangerous research to continue without proper safeguards in place, because the next time might be worse. The select subcommittee has been focused on gathering evidence in order to conduct fact-based investigations because Americans deserve answers. And we have been gathering data, recommendations, and information so that we can predict, prepare, protect, and prevent a future public health disaster. This hearing was an essential step in this process because safeguards are lacking. Biosecurity and biosafety standards must be strengthened. We have a chance right now to prepare better, to ensure that high-risk laboratories are as safe as possible, and we need to take advantage of this opportunity. So thank you for being here today, and we look forward to continuing to work with the witnesses on this issue uh, as the select subcommittee continues its work. Uh, with that and without objection, all members will have five legislative days within which to submit materials and to submit additional written questions for the witnesses, which will be forwarded to the witnesses for their response. If there are no if there's no further business, without objection, the select subcommittee stands adjourned. <laughs>